हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू डेटा सेंटर गुरु नॉलेज प्लेटफॉर्म नोइंग ए टू जेड ऑफ डेटा सेंटर इन माय लास्ट सेशन आई टॉक्ड अबाउट आई रियली एंटर्ड इनटू द एंटायर डिजाइन मॉड्यूल और डिजाइन प्रोसेस आई एक्सप्लेन यू व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट प्रोसेस ब्लॉक्स व्हिच इज देयर इन द डिजाइन व्हाट आर द काइंड ऑफ स्किल सेट्स व्हिच इज रिक्वायर्ड and in fact i also covered the first stage of the design process which is collecting the inputs as you know you know garbage in and garbage out so it is very very important for anybody to collect the correct inputs uh, for the design so that you are able to incorporate this uh, the same in the design and outcome of the design can be more appropriate more um, accurate and in line with the objectives which is set in the beginning so in the today's session i am talking about master plan which is the second stage of the design process so in today's session i am going to talk about what are what is this master plan what about so broadly i'll explain about it and then we'll talk about what are the different elements of the master plan and then how this master plan is completed what are the processes involved into it so that will give you a fair idea in terms of how this master planning process is complete so this is the design process which uh, in my last session i talked about and the first stage that is design inputs i have completed and uh, i explain you what are the different kind of inputs required and from different types of different resources or different stakeholders and in today's we are talking about the master plan part of it and then subsequently in my next session we'll talk about concept design detail design and so on and so forth so master planning is nothing but it is a process of preparing a blueprint or road map for data center building block like building power cooling space efficiency reliability these are all the inputs which we take which meets the data center requirement and enables to manage throughout the life span of the data center seamlessly so this stage is very very important because master plans mean you consider end to end perspective of the data center on the site how whenever you are planning it you even if you want to build in multiple phases but the entire plan has to be done for that site in the beginning and has to be incorporated in the master plan so master plan is very very important to align and it and facility together because there are a lot of inputs which comes from the technology side of it and which i explained in my previous session i don't want to repeat it again so come coming back to what are the different elements of master plan this is very very important aspect because when you get into a process of preparing a master plan then you must know what are the different elements which gets into and which you need to consider while preparing it the first block we call it site planning so there are a lot of activity which gets involved when you are talking about on the site so when you go to the site you have to take into consideration all the inputs design inputs which you have taken already you have to see on the site what is the level of the site with respect to the outside road so based on that you need to level up 
your land place if required to maintain the right labeling. Normally it is around 900 to 1200 up should be up from your uh, base road level outside and similarly your data center plinth level has to be uh, 900 1200 mm up from the inside road levels which is required. So leveling is the first stage which is very very important and that will give you input in terms of how and where and what is the level up to which you are going to fill the land. Second is approach. So how do you define the approach? Typically how the overall plot or land mass is located, how the accessibility to that land, what is the accessibility of different services which is required for the data center, from which direction, how it is coming. So what is uh, so based on the approach accessibility and the building so you decide keeping in view a lot of all those parameters in terms of how the building approach the approach is what is typically entry and exit to the building and ideally it has to be typically entry and exit a separate route should be planned for the data center and uh, Ideally, the, the overall plot should be four side open, but even if it is three side is okay, but to minimum it has to be two side open and to ensure that all the services comes from, otherwise it becomes very difficult and you carry high risk if you take all the services from one side. And let us say you got all the services from one side and somebody has dug the road and your services may get impacted and become so kind of a single point of failure for your data center. So these are something, obviously it is part of uh, site due diligence process, but whenever you are planning all the services there, so based on how those services will approach to your data center building, you have to plan. S similarly, you have to also plan for the logistics. So how heavy equipment should be lifted at different locations, different positions, where you want to put it. Second block is utility planning. So utility planning it comes based on, let us say, customer gets inputs, I am going to build 10 megawatt data center and I will have um, around uh, 1200 racks. Uh, and uh, so based on those base inputs, you need to uh, create a kind of a estimated size of the different equipments and so based on that you can be able to evaluate for this particular uh, equipment like electrical your substation or HD connection how and where these routes are going to be where these metering devices are how cables are going to be laid Similarly, we are going to put your DG sets, we are going to put your fuel, HSD tanks, how the entire piping is going to run. Similarly, your mechanical system, where your chillers are going to be placed, how the entire piping is going to be run, how cabling, how the bus bar is going to run. So, all the utility planning, you need to put it in that particular piece of land and see how it is getting adjusted or impacted. So these are the factors which you need to consider, electrical, mechanical, water, its storage and also the routing part of it, firefighting, where you are going to put the hydrants, how the entire firefighting piping is going to be all across, how the sewage system is going to work and how the entire routing is going to be. Uh, one thing is very, very important that whenever you are planning the uh, location where you are going to put these particular utilities and whenever you are planning to route it at different location you need to make sure that there is no crisscross or there is no well, there has to be adequate isolation between different services like fiber you need to have at least three routes from which the fiber should be coming in similarly if electrical uh, sources are coming you need to ideally take it from the different routes 
in your data center to minimize the risk of that particular failure. Similarly, another aspect is the landscaping cost. So whatever which is available on uh, the land, which part of area and how you are going to do the landscaping of the balance part of it, how you are going to create the boundary wall, how you are going to plan the space planning for setting of the building, how much space you should leave based on the building codes which are there uh, from uh, time to time. So those inputs are also has to be considered. So these are the different elements of when you go to the site and start preparing the master plan of your data center. So coming back, next, so it is very very necessary to understand how do we carry the activities on the master plan from start to end and each stage what are the activities and what deliverables we are expected to get from uh, that stage is very very important. So I just tried to create four stages in the master planning process and explain what are those different activities and deliverables which is required to be carried out in each and every stage. So first stage is specifically as I said design input stage. So we have to validate those inputs whatever we have come. Second is analysis phase. So whatever inputs we have got we need to consolidate first and then analyze the impact of those inputs on the different parameters in terms of data center building blocks. I explain you what are the different data center building blocks. So what is the impact of those inputs on the data center building blocks which we need to analyze. Impact during the implementation phase, what is the impact of the cost, time, what is the feasibility of those inputs which has come and how aligned it is with the project objective. So based on this analysis then the, because that becomes an input to the planning phase. So in the planning phase based on these analysis inputs what are the key activities which we need to do in the master planning process. So we need to do the space planning for criteria that is for example customer has asked for 1000 racks data center. So for 1000 rack what is the space requirement? So on the master plan he has to create that space whether he creates on the one floor or multiple floors together whether he has got feasibility of expand horizontally or expand uh, vertically so that depends on uh, the site and then space planning for other DC's areas so I explained you there are different elements in the master planning process like for different utilities how do you you need to uh, uh, assign a space for those stuff so before assigning the space you must know what is the space required for that so based on let us say 1000 IT racks and uh, uh, let us say average power density they have considered 5 kilowatt per rack. So 1000 is how much? Uh, 5000 that is 5 megawatt. So for 5 megawatt of IT load, what are the capacity of different utilities which is required which we need to consider. and for that capacity what is the space required so we need to consider those space as a blocks and plan them because as i said in the uh, in my previous slides element of master plan it has to be segregated adequately isolated adequately if there cannot be a mix match because that will create more number of risks so those things has to be taken care of plan to comply with the statutory requirements. So what are the statutory requirements which is come as a part of the inputs. Let us say building code requires this much of uh, space has to be 
available for or this is the only FSI you can be able to use this much of space you need to have parking this much of space you need to have something else so those space you need to keep it aside plan to minimize and uh, the mitigate to open site risks so whatever uh, site due diligence which has been done what are the open risks which was there how do we mitigate it so those solutions and for that solution what is required you need to incorporate then design and discussion considerations so everything may not have input to you because there are a lot of technical inputs which is required for the, even for the master planning process that you need to consider in design consideration on the design basis and that becomes a baseline why you prepare the master planning process so finally the final stage is how you complete and what are the deliverables of the master plan process so prepare the blueprint or road map which is the final stage the base site plan so we prepare the base site plan of the building where they were identified the builder data center then on the base site plan you have to map all the services you have to prepare floor plans and you have to also discuss points with the customer uh on objective versus feasibility if there is any further inputs or concurrence required from the customer uh, with where you know you are feeling that there can be expectation gap uh, uh, on a reality versus expected so you need to discuss and take the customer concurrence on it prepare the entire road map and then once everything is done you submit the entire deliverable to the customer discuss with them explain him with him in case there is any uh, inputs or changes which is required from the customer side incorporate in the final stuff get the sign up and then you are ready to move to the next stage so this the final fourth stage finishes the uh, master planning process in my next session i would be talking about concept design which is next stage of the master planning process so in the concept design uh, i will talk more in detail but this is the very very important phase where it's like you've got skeleton and on the skeleton during the detailed designing phase you are going to create the entire body so this concept design is very important and you must watch this session on uh, upcoming the 15th of april i will be uploading it so with this i would like to thank you all for watching this session and i am again requesting you to watch this session completely because uh intentionally i made those sessions smaller 15 20 minutes or maximum half an hour uh, so that you get maximum advantage out of it you don't have to sit for hours together to get those stuff and i would be really interested to take your feedback inputs on the improvements if there is any and uh, i will try and incorporate it in my upcoming sessions so with this i would like to thank you have a great day great evening great morning bye bye take care